Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of The Adventure Writer. I will be your host, Kale Fasil, and today we'll be talking about another topic in narrative design in TTRPGs. And before we continue, a disclaimer, I am not an end-all be-all expert on the matter, and or any of the matters that we discuss here actually, but I do feel like I have a good touch on the industry and whatnot, and I can offer some good opinions and some good suggestions on how you could actually approach all these topics. So with that out of the way, let's move on to the topic of today. So basically, we're gonna talk about spellcrafting. And actually, spells are one of the most important parts of fantasy TTRPGs. And not only, actually. They're not only for fantasy TTRPGs, because magic and the unknown are very often one of the key elements that help push forward some of the most amazing narratives and stories that we see in the TTRPGs that we love. So before I make a video, I always do a lot of research. And before making actually this video, I found something on Google, the most visited result actually, that said how to make a spell for TTRPGs in four easy steps. And it was actually find a spell that's similar to what you want, make a template, decide what you want to change, then take your new spell to your GM and explain why you want it. Now that of course is from the perspective of a player and we always talk about the writer's perspective here, like if you're writing an adventure or making a cool narrative or something. So we will change a few things here and there. We're not going to follow this exact formula. And I would suggest we explore it in a different manner, at least slightly, for a few reasons. So slightly different because I do think that the first step is more or less the same. I strongly believe that we should create the things that we imagine first and the things that we know second. And that is because, well, what I mean is that we should always take things from our imagination instead of trying to just outright copy something else. It's not wrong to just copy something and just alter it because, you know, basically you will never be able to make something completely new. Parthenogenesis is like something that we've talked about a lot and not just in this industry but in other industries as well. And the thing is our imagination is an amalgamation of all our inspirations and favorite things, so relying on that is already awesome and plenty enough to go with. There is no need to actually go with something already existing but rather something that is in your mind. So if you like the Fireball spell in this case, you don't don't need to go looking for how Fireball works, you don't need to look it up. You could instead try to imagine how your version of Fireball would work like and then start researching for more ideas. And I am of the opinion that planning out at least the basis for what you want to make before you start looking up other people's ideas is extremely important if you want to maintain some kind of originality in your work and that way you will also end up adding even more of your signature style and your creative ideas into it. So if you were to look it up, you will immediately just be biased because you would think that, hey, you know, this person's way of how this fireball-esque spell works is much cooler than what I had in mind. But that's because you never ended up developing the idea that you had in your mind in the first place. So I will say we need to ask the question, as we always do with these narrative design videos and the way that we approach things, we need to always ask the question, why are we doing this? Why are we creating new spells when there are so many already? Well, first of all, not everyone is satisfied with what exists and maybe you just want more of a certain something. For example, whenever I've made a pyromaniac for an adventure or a story that I've created, well, well, a pyromaniac wizard in that case, let's say, it's just not enough fire spells out there and I always needed more. I always felt like there weren't enough for what I wanted to do with the character. And I created pillars of fire, rings of fire, different kinds of flame walls, tornadoes of flame and so much more. You, you have no idea. And it was ridiculous really, but what was important is that it was thematic. I had what I needed for the character to be more fleshed out, to come more forward. And you should have a good reason for creating new spells, of course. Because if you don't, then you will end up creating spells that are uninteresting and ones that feel like they do not belong in the stories that you're writing, that you're creating. As with all things narrative design related, do not create things for the sake of it. You need to be able to attach them to a story and make them feel connected in any way you can. The spells could belong to a character that practices specific kinds of magic. They could be super rare spells found in a long forgotten grimoire or they could be the result of a magical experiment. All of these things are things that could help create a story for you. All of these examples uh, and reasons can help drive you towards creating spells that are not only thematic, but also super cool and interesting. But how do you balance them though? Because, well, that of course depends on the system that you're playing, but at the same time, that question could have a very easy answer. Compare and contrast with other existing, for example, officially, uh, preferably, I would say, spells, and see how you can make them special. Now, 
Now, what I mean by special is that if you were to take the fireball spell and then use it as a comparison for your new custom, let's say, fire boulder spell, you wouldn't want your fire boulder spell in this case to be the same thing as what fireball does. You wouldn't want it to be just a better fireball. You want it to be something different. And seeing what the spell fireball does is a good starting point since it would allow you to scale your own spell up or down, numbers wise at least, and then also give it something else interesting in this case, like an added effect. The added effect is usually what makes spells differ from one another. There are plenty of straight damage spells already out there, so I would suggest avoiding making another one of those. Because if you do, you will only end up adding to an already huge pile of samey spells that exist. Like if you make another fire damage spell, well, yeah, okay, you think nobody has thought of that before, like it doesn't already exist in the system? It probably does. And as cool as Fireball Rank 2 may sound, trust me when I say that People will care more about a fire boulder, like once they hear how it can roll around and explode multiple times before reaching its final destination. Like, come on, that, that's such a much cooler fireball, right? It's not just fireball rank 2. But you would say in this case, but I do not know the system that well to make my own stuff balanced enough. Well, who cares? Because as I said multiple times before and in many other videos, as long as you make it thematic and interesting, that is what matters. As long as you compare it to another spell that you believe is more or less of the same rank, then you just copy paste the numbers found on that official spell and then you start making some adjustments. I mean, here's a little secret, right? No homebrew is perfectly balanced and it is ridiculous to even think that we can balance things into the RPGs because the system is supposed to be open in a way that that it allows for certain rules to exist and in order for it to allow different things to come together and be fun. Yes, it is more about it being fun rather than it is about being balanced because if you think this is what people thought when they created st stupidly powerful stuff like a Litz and what that monster can do, well, then you're in for a surprise. I mean, having mentioned that, we will definitely do an episode on how to create monsters as well because I think it's a very interesting topic and that will be a bit more hands-on because I do think there is a lot to talk about it and it would be really Really cool to explore the topic in a more kind of like dissected and see how that can help the narrative kind of way. Of course, I do need to remind you that this series and this video is about narrative and game design in TTRPGs and not about how you can create completely bonkers and crazy things as a GM or a player. The information that I provide through these videos is to basically help people with writing adventures and other TTRPG related content. Creating new spells is a huge deal for when you're writing adventures because they can help set the scene for amazing narrative. And for example, a new spell could be the center of your whole story, which is exactly what I did with the narrative for the Soulfrost Reliquary Grand Tale, uh, since the Secret of Soulfrost is a series of spells that the players are trying to discover, and so are the bodies, of course, and you're trying to stop them from doing that before you. A new spell could also help an NPC stand out. A healer could have powerful healing powers and they could be unlike anything that the players have ever seen before. They could be drawing that spell power, the healer could be drawing that spell power from something specific like a sacred or enchanted item. This sets up tons of opportunities for narratives and stories to be made for it and in turn adventure content to be created for those stories. Magic is something that helps push the narrative forward and although this is a topic that I will definitely expand on more in a future episode, spells are most definitely one of those two tools that derives from that magic. Spells can help push the narrative forward in ways that the players would never expect. For example, if an NPC teleports out of nowhere when they were not expected to be able to do something like that, then that is immediately something that you added through the use of a new or already existing in that case spell. So it could be like a different kind of like teleport from the ones that already exist because it just serves your narrative better. Anyway, that's all for today. I hope you learned something out of this and if you have a spell idea, by the way, that you have been thinking about creating, then maybe you could leave it in the comments and see what other people think about it. I will most definitely be reading all of the comments and I will leave my opinion on it and feedback and kind of like, you know, give a little bit of like, hey, this sounds cool, kind of like, you know, nuts towards you. As always, if you like the video, it would help greatly if you leave a like, a thumbs up, uh, by clicking on the little button below the video. And if you like the videos that I create, then feel free to subscribe because I will be creating more and more and putting them out weekly. And if you would like to support me, then I also run a Patreon where I basically post all of these videos and also release tons of exclusive TTRPG content every month. As always, a huge thank you to my patrons for making this a reality because I wouldn't be doing this without their support. And until next time, may Starlight guide your way, my friends. Bye-bye.